Welcome to Ask GCN Anything, the show where we take your burning cycling queries, questions and problems and with any luck give you some informative and interesting answers. So straight away we've got a question here from Andrew Brown who asks, I'm currently training for my first century, so 100 mile ride, and simultaneously looking to lose 30 pounds of weight and I'm using the charity ride as my reason to get in shape. Can you recommend a good beginner's guide to follow for three or four months? Now, this is a question we get asked an awful lot, but the bottom line is, apart from being, like, there's quite a few other component parts to it, is getting used to riding your bike for increasingly further distances. Yeah, we don't have an actual training plan set out that you can follow, but the things to remember are that you should progress your training ever so gradually and also be very consistent as well. So it's better to do a few rides in a week that are a bit shorter than one long ride at the weekend. And this next video should really help you. It's how to do long rides. Long rides are commonplace in cycling and it's easy to see why. You get an amazing sense of achievement, you get to go to places that you might not have seen before, and after you've recovered from them at least, they get you fitter. It's time now for the quick fire round. That was very quick, Dan. First up we have Jacob Adam who asks, what happens to all the professional bikes, gear, accessories and kit at the end of the season? Now, really good question there, Jacob, but Dan, you're a pro more recently than me, so perhaps you can answer that one. Uh, yeah, most of the teams will own their equipment at the end of each season, so they'll often sell it on. Sometimes they do that privately, maybe giving the first option to team staff or friends of the team. Other teams will sell them on their own website, but you can keep your eye out for things like the Canyon website, who, for example, will often sell the old Katusha or Mobistar bikes on their website. Now, in relation to the kit, most riders will keep their own kit, which they get quite a lot of. They might give it to friends and family. But interestingly, Matt Bramier, who is a pro with Team Dimension Data, he's set up a charity. It's absolutely fantastic. You can find more details at africaappeal.com, where basically he's collating riders' old kit and then giving it to riders in Africa who aren't quite as fortunate as us. Uh, and that kit is then reused and recycled. Absolutely fantastic yeah, charity. Yeah, that's a very, Check it out. very good initiative indeed. Next question from David Mills. Multiple questions here from David. He clearly had a lot of time on his hands. One of the key ones we're going to pull out is here. Do you think track improves a rider's skills? Definitely. I did ride the track a little bit, although you might not think so by my antics on this particular channel. But definitely, if you've got a youngster, get them on the track. Remember them riding on a fixed wheel without brakes in really close proximity to other riders. And some of the finest riders in the world now have a track background. So definitely advise yeah, I think it's really important to have some kind of other discipline uh, as you're younger when you're getting into cycling whether that be track whether that be cyclocross or mountain biking BMX it does even. give you some more diverse skills so Peter Sagan for example a very very good mountain biker as he was growing up definitely one more question from David uh, what's the strangest thing you've run over well I unfortunately I once run over a squirrel I've also hit a sheep but I also hit a pigeon head on as well. So I didn't really run him over, but we had a collision. Uh, that was quite interesting. And a log? Yeah, and a log. <laughs> okay, the next question uh, comes in from Bailey Bligden. How was it riding for the Cervelo test Come team? On. Did you pick this one out? I did, yeah. Oh, oh, no, answer, might, very, very good. Pleasant. Is that it? Yeah. There's the shorts hanging up there as well. Anyway. Okay. We should go straight in to a racing question now that comes in from Jun Hong Wei. He says, what do you guys do to prepare the day or weeks leading up to a race? Well, Jun Hong, a lot of that depends on what your aims and ambitions are. All different riders will have completely different uh, race programs, different, uh, different places they want to peek at. And I think more importantly, it depends on the time of year. Because if it's midway through the year, you might be looking at resting, you might be in the middle of a taper session. So it's a great question. Um, what do you think, Dan? Well, crucially, it's what you do in the weeks and months leading up to a race, which is really going to decide exactly what your form is going to be on the day. What you do the day before shouldn't really have any bearing, or it won't. So the worst thing you can do is try and do a big ride the day before. The two days leading up to a big race should be mostly about resting, tapering down, and making sure that you're fit and fresh for the day itself. But the focus should be on the long lead up to it and being consistent there. Yeah, just you did ask what we did on the day before an event, and as Dan touched on, I always went for about an hour, hour and a half ride and just put a couple of little sprints in there just to get my heart rate up but primarily you need to be fresh for that race and in fact we have a video that explores the lead up to a race in a bit more detail called how to train for your first race 
Entering your first race is a really big step, but here at GCN, we've all got racing backgrounds and we loved it. We thoroughly recommend it to you as well. Nothing quite beats the thrill, racing along at high speeds in a bunch, pushing your limits. Now, a comfort-based question from Bicycle Sunday, which is quite apt considering I'm laying down on a sofa in that particular shot, in relation particularly to saddles. Now, Bicycle Sunday's had a lot of difficulty getting comfortable in the saddle. He says he's had a bit of a sore ass. Now, this is something that is extremely commonplace, especially when you've had a long layoff, and there aren't really too many shortcuts, apart from just spending time back in the saddle and getting used to the position. But if that problem sort of persists and you're constantly getting pain and it's definitely worth having a look at your saddle itself or the shape of your saddle. Yeah, it can take a number of months or even years of riding for you to get hardened to long hours in the saddle. But as Matt said, it can be the shape of the saddle more than the amount of padding on it which really affects how comfortable it is. So an example from me personally, I had years of having saddle sores, but I experimented with different saddles until I found one which actually meant I didn't have a saddle sore for a good few years. So if that is a problem you're having, make sure you experiment with different types of saddles and you might find one that is perfect for you. Yeah, your posterior needs to persevere and be patient. Or you could watch this video, our top 10 ways to prevent a sore ass. The humble backside, call it what you will, bottom, ass, rear or rump. It's one of the three contact points you have with your bike and arguably the most important. A sore bottom is a sad bottom, bummer. So here's GCN's top 10 tips to not getting a sore ass. Well, thank you to everybody who's already sent us a question in. But if you have got a burning question that you'd like to ask a GCN presenter, make sure you use social media with the hashtag TalkBack, or indeed, just leave your questions in the comments just below this video. Now, if you'd like to know the differences between the three main types of road bike out on the marketplace these days, how about checking out this video, our Road Bike Buyer's Guide, as presented by Simon. Yeah, on the other hand, if you'd like to see our five training hacks, we've got them for you just down there. And to subscribe to GCN, click in the little sandwich filling bit between the two videos we've just recommended. Absolutely free, and make sure you share our videos and like them too.